Greetings, it's Alex Scher for the Shelburne Freelancer. I'm in Hornings Mills for uh, Survival Central is here with... Hi, this is Robert Steer from Survival Central. Uh, we're here today at the annual Preppers Meet. It's the third annual Preppers Meet uh, out of Hornings Mills. We're at the site of Arc 2 and uh, this weekend we expect possibly uh, approximately about uh, 100 to 200 uh, people to learn survival and uh, survival skills and how to prepare for disasters and emergencies. And um, why do you feel it's necessary to even think about these things? Well, uh, just with the state of, uh, like, it seems the weather's uh, really uh, contributes to this, like with flooding and uh, the uncertainty of uh, what can happen with uh, the, just the weather itself. And then you've got other uh, world, uh, world situations with politics, economics, and uh, it's just a good to be prepared to have at least three days worth of food and water just in case of like an ice storm or uh, a tornado or a, a flood uh, or if even the power goes out um, just to be the, so that you have enough to get by until uh, things uh, return to normal. So it's not necessarily preparing for an apocalypse or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Like uh, the word prepper it seems to have a lot of negative connotations mm -hmm. uh, to it and uh, I think it's just because that's the Americans view of it. Uh, here in Canada we're a little bit more polite about prepping. Uh, we mainly focus on uh, being just prepared for a disaster or, uh, or an emergency. Uh, just, it, it, it's just that we, we we like to have a more positive uh, outlook on prepping, not to be so negative, and um, that's uh, th that's the reason why uh, we prepare, and that's how we view prepping, anyway. Oh, so you don't like dig bunkers across Canada, and <laughs> well, even though that we're sit sitting out in front of Arc uh, Two, which is a bunker uh, here, it's a uh, nuclear fallout shelter uh, meant uh, for, to be turned into an orf orphanage just in case of a, a nuclear uh, incident. Uh, it's 40 school buses uh, buried under uh, ground. It's been, uh, it was put here by Bruce Beach. He's a local resident of Hoarding Mills and uh, he's given us uh, the permission to run this event uh, for the second year in a row uh, and we're very grateful for that. It just uh, seems to be a good focal point. Uh, now we're not all this extreme. Uh, we all go to different, uh, we all have different levels that we prep but there's also newcomers here and we're introducing this to new people all the time and they're coming learning how to just uh, get ready and have uh, the things that they need, enough food, enough water, uh, what uh, gear they would need to uh, start a fire or uh, just to be prepared. And uh, people will be camping here on the grounds over the weekend? Uh, yes, we expect probably about uh, 100 or so campers are going to be camping up on the hill. Um, we're going to be having a campfire. We have some evening events as well, so like we're jam-packed with events right from Saturday morning, uh, which we started this morning at 10 o'clock, all the way up till Sunday, uh, about 5 o'clock uh, supper time. So we have events going all through the day, and we've got some at night. Uh, we've got activities for kids, and it's just a family-orientated uh, thing. That sounds pretty wonderful, actually. Um, like a lot of fun, the whole family could know, and if there's an emergency, even the kids can take part in it. Oh yeah, and like uh, like that's what we stress. It's a family uh, it's a family activity to do. If the kids know what to do and their parents aren't home in case of an emergency or disaster, it, it just it just helps everybody. And uh, then you if you do it as a, a family unit, uh, you can rest assured as an adult if they're trained well and they know what to do, then you know they're safe, and that takes the stress away as well. So what is the, if you had to give people one thing, one word of advice, what thing should they have on their person, in their cars, in the event of an emergency? One item. One item? Uh, that, that's kind of uh, difficult. Um, like, like us as preppers, we tend to have a lot of gear, uh, but uh, you can't really narrow it down to one item alone. Like, uh, you, you could say, okay, well, what's important, fire or water, uh, but I would, if, if I had one item, it'd probably be a water filter, because then if I'm stranded at the side of a road, I can go to the ditch and, uh, and scoop out some water and at least have some water to drink. Uh, there's, uh, uh, one of the instructors was talking about uh, an incident where uh, people were stranded at the side of a road out in the middle of nowhere, and they had no water, they had no food. If they had a filter in there, they at least have water, and water being important that you can only go three days without water, that's probably the most important thing to have. That's and great. And you can always use your car for shelter, so. Um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, how will they do that? Uh, you can do it uh, two ways. You can uh, go to the website, uh, theannualpreppersmeet.com, 
or you can uh, contact me directly uh, as well uh, at survivalcentral.ca and also another website, uh, thepositiveprepper.com. Very good. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a happy, safe weekend. Well, thank you very much. This is Alex Scher for the Shelburne Freelancer, sharing Shelburne with the world. Thank you. Thank you.